You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of All Time 11 right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPay, delighted to be your host as always. We've got a very special guest in this episode. I'm joined by the former Troyes, French under-21, Sheffield United, Hearts and Dundee striker Christian Nadi. Christian, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome you on the show, mate. Thanks very much for joining me. Our pleasure is mine, thank you. How are you? Are you good? I'm good, I'm good. To be tired, but I'm okay. How have you been? How what's been, how you been playing? You're, you're now at Bank Juniors. What's, uh, what's it like been there? Ah, it's, it's good to enjoy football anymore, you know, with no pressure and everything. It's good just to to go back to let's say the sources when you know you you are uh, when I was young and I was uh, playing for more than just uh, achieving something but for for fun yeah like this uh, this feeling brilliant obviously you had a good you had a very good career you started out in France you had six years at Troyes what was your your bringing up up like there how much did you enjoy those six years oh it was it was amazing it was amazing this um you know, France is different than the UK. When you you start, you start with uh, as an academy, so everybody lives together. You live with your parents, and and all the players become your family. They are becoming your family actually because you're 15 and you live with them, you eat with them, you go to school with them, you learn football with them. So you spend more time with them than with anybody else. And 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 I loved it. And then we, I managed to 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 uh, to be professional. Yeah. Uh, Fortunately, not uh, all the players managed to do it, but I managed to be fun, but we still stayed very, very close. And until now, we still talk to each other and everything. Right. That's, and, and I love that, you know, it's, it's very difficult to find people like that who support you, even though they have failed and they're still there behind you and, and help you to uh, to uh, achieve your goals, yeah, which were their goals too. Brilliant. You moved to England with Sheffield United. Did you did you find it hard coming to... To England after it's been so long in your kind of home country of France. What was it, the culture like when you came to England? It was it was hard. It was hard. Um, the thing is, it's, it's quite different. But when I was at Choice, I went on loan for a team. I came back from an injury, a long injury, so I went on loan for for a team called Le Havre for six months, and it was quite difficult. And I remember on the way there, I was crying. So when I left Choice and went to Sheffield, it's like I already changed the club. Yeah. And and uh, even though it was another country with another, another language, which I couldn't speak at the time, it was still um, some things that I've done before. So it wasn't as hard as it was. <laughs> I remember my first training station, I was I was late because I, I couldn't remember, the, remember uh, the, the way to get to the training ground. So it wasn't like the best first day, but it's, uh, it was all good. Brilliant. The, the memory you have from your time at Sheffield United was the one in goal against Arsenal. Is that is that the fav- your favorite moment of your career? It's, it's one of them. It's one of them. She was I think the, the whole time in Sheffield was amazing, except of just the last game of the season. But the whole time in Sheffield was was amazing. What make it even more amazing? Yeah, like you say, it's, it's my, my first uh, first time I started the game. Um, I was on the first eleven and and then I scored. And it, the fact that it was against Arsenal, the teams that I used to love. Mm-hmm. Was, to like to watch play, um, it, it was amazing. It was amazing for me. Brilliant. The manager that was there at the time was Neil Warnock. Obviously, a very, very popular and controversial figure. How how funny was he? And what was his? What was the best memories you've got of been being with Neil Warnock at Sheffield? <laughs> Neil Warnock is a character. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, there's only one guy like him. He's, I remember he used to come in, in at the training session only on the Thursday, so he wouldn't assist on the training on the Monday, Tuesday. He wouldn't be there. He would be in his house. See, he had a house near Brighton, so he was enjoying himself over there. Come back on the Thursday, 10 minutes before the training session, laugh with the player, and then take the session on the, on Friday and just laugh. That's what he's done. <laughs> he was, in, <laughs> and he will leave after the, on the Saturday after the game. He said, okay, see you Thursday, guys. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? Now, he, was, he was amazing. He, he, he facilitated my integration as well, despite he couldn't even speak French or couldn't speak English. It really, really helped me uh, on my time, at, my time at Sheffield. Brilliant. We'll make a wee start on your team. We'll, we'll touch on your, your kind of later career in Scotland later on in the show. Have you got a formation in mind of how you're going to set your team up? Yes, I do. 
What have you yeah, got? So what are you going with? So my goalkeeper will be uh, Steve Mandanda. Okay. For Olympic Marseille, amazing goalkeeper. He was actually one of the that is the best cup killer I play with like from far. He, he had like a presence in in a goal. Like he was taking the full goal, goal and he was just young. He was just impressive. He was, I don't know, I don't even know how to explain. You know, he had something about him. And when you were getting close to him, you say, oh, it's not no point, no chance I'm going to score. And did you see even then, like he would go on and have the, the good career he's had? He's been really, really good good at Marseille and he's obviously played for the French national team. Could you see even then that that's the heights he would go to? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm definitely not surprised. I, it was unbelievable. It was actually unbelievable. I'm surprised and he's actually never been the real number one of, of national team. Yeah. I would have put number one. He was just so good. Obviously, uh, Lugo Loris is an amazing good player as well, an amazing goalkeeper as well. So, you know, but for me, yeah, uh, Mandanda was a uh, good We'll move on to right back. Who have you got at right back? Uh, right back would be... <laughs> Right back would be uh, Jeremy Mathieu. Yep. He was a polyvalent player. He could play anywhere from the midfield to the defence. He was just an amazing player. Very, very serious. And you can see from his um, his career, he played for Socho, uh, which was a good team at the time in France. And then yeah. um, played for, um, I think, Lyon. I think. Yeah, he went to Lyon, yeah. And then, uh, and then uh, Barcelona. You know, it's not everybody who played for Barcelona, despite... He didn't have the best career there. He didn't play every game, but yeah. you know, he had enough players. And when they had a, a problem somewhere, they would just put him. So they, they trusted him, and honestly, he was and he's so calm and everything. He never panicked. Um, I, I loved, I loved. You know, you, you need those kind of player in your team to just, you know, when you're under pressure, you know, then he's gonna put a ball in his feet and just calm down everything. Brilliant. Other side, who have we got at left back? <laughs> left back was Patrice Evra. Brilliant. He's been need to be uh, to talk much about him. He's, he's just an amazing player, but just an amazing uh, human being. Uh, well, you can see his career. There's much to say. He talked by itself. He's a, he, was, he's, he was at some point the best in the world. So, and how good was he? Like at Man United, how how important was he to that Man United team? Do you think? Well, he, he ended up captain of of one of the best team in the world. So, yeah, it's just impressive. It's impressive, and you know, he's got like this. His attitude and everything, and how positive all the time, like then also trying to push every player. And no, he's, he's an amazing guy, amazing guy. Brilliant. We're going to centre back. We'll start off with your left centre back. Who have you got there? Left centre back, I would say um, Damien Perkis. So, okay. Damien Perkis was one of, it's my best friend, also one of our cousin friends, football, my best friend. Um, he played for Social Saint Etienne in France. Uh, if you had the spell in uh, in MLS, he had the spell in. Um, well, we played in choice together. He had the spell in. Um, well, um, in Spain as well. Uh, also in championship here. Mm-hmm. Honestly, he's uh, the most realized guy I ever seen, and his, his passing accuracy is unbelievable. Um, now, really, really good player. Very, very nice guy. Uh, very, it's like he's, he's very, very smart. He's mm-hmm. a kind of player who is <laughs> so weird. You feel like he's got shortcut on the pitch. You right. can dribble middle and then he's the one who's going to tackle you in a, in a box and say, how oh, did you do that? Where you come from? And he no, I, I love I love the guy. I love the guy. Brilliant. Brilliant. Closing out the defence, who have you got a right centre back? I've got um, well, that left centre back. No, I don't know. Phil Jagelka. Right, OK. That's for his presence. And uh, you know, it's, it's uh, intelligence, the way he understands the game. Once once again, the player who can play anywhere in the middle and in defense, um, very, very strong and quite fast as well. Um, also, his career too by itself, you know, he played for the English national team. By the way, uh, Damien Perkis played for the Polish national team with uh, when they played in Europa League, um, the European Nation Cup. He yeah. was there. Um, but yeah, so Fidja Keka played with, with Everton for years. He, now he's back in Sheffield, but he played for um, English national team. You know, he's this kind of player. You don't need to, to talk too much. Uh, that career to by itself. And see, like the likes of Phil Jagielka, how good was he in the dressing room for? For like, for like you, like Sheffield United, was he? Would he help you quite well? 
Yeah, of course. And you know, for he was what one year older than me, one year or two years older than me, and he had also his his um, aura on the dressing room. Yeah. Uh, for for such a young age, he was a vice captain for such a young age again. Yeah. You know, he, he pushing players and and when the coach was not talking, which was rare, he was the one um, putting his voice up there. And you know, he, he was he was a really good guy. He always been nice to me. Brilliant. Just before we move on to your midfield, obviously you came to Scotland. Your first spell was at Hearts. How good was your was your spell at Hearts? And who were the kind of good dressing room characters there? <laughs> Interesting, it was amazing. It was so weird. You know, sometimes we used to, to well, with a player we were very close. Uh, let's talk to each other, but everybody have to talk their, their own languages. Right, okay. So there were, like, <laughs> people from everywhere in the dressing room. Yeah. So we could have a full conversation with talking their, full, their own uh, own languages, and we started just be serious. <laughs> but we got to speak to some player in French, and this guy we speak in, in Ghana, and there was one from uh, Uganda, and there was one from Lithuania. And then you go there, and you've got like someone from I don't even know from where, and then and there, and then we talk like we actually understand each other. It was <laughs> it was just crazy. Uh, it was it, it was nice. You no, know, it was nice. We had we had a lot of fun. And who were the good who were the good characters? Who was the, who was really really good in in the dressing room? Good in the dressing room. <sighs> I think everybody was was quite nice in the dressing. Everybody was good. You know, they were like, for example, the Wallace were very, very calm, don't talk much, very uh, listening a lot. It, it was, it was, it was very good. Um, it's, it's difficult. The closest guy I was in the dressing room was um, was Marius Zalukas, and uh, okay. and um, he was, he was, um, he was. I was always laughing. We were always laughing. I was always playing with him. We tried to, when the, the the dressing room would be silent. We try to do a stuff to make it like noisy and people laugh and everything. We we'll... yeah, it was good. It was it was a good. Brilliant. Your favorite. What was your favorite memories for your your spell at Hearts on the park? Like you'd a you'd a couple of good managers as well. What was your favorite memories are on the park? I've got a few. It was every time I scored against Hibs. Right. Oh, it's not. It's not like to blow it up. It's, <laughs> it's weak, but um, yeah, every time I scored against Hibs, it was it was it was amazing for me. And how good was that atmosphere of an Edinburgh derby? You know, I don't usually feel some kind of pressure, but there it's just like they're on top of you. You can feel it like yeah. someone is older and said, "Look, don't mess it up. Don't mess it up." Was just so good. It was so brilliant. You you had a couple of good spells as well at, at other Scottish teams. What was it about Scotland that you you were you kind of stayed for a long time? Was it just did you get kind of like the culture? Did you like the the area you were in at Scotland? How why how did you kind of stay with the likes of Dundee, Wraith, and Hamilton? What was the what was the reason you stayed in Scotland? Because I, I, I love Scottish weather. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, no, I'm joking. No, you know, it's like I, I, I play for choice and I was in um, in the academy. So like I said, we were always together. We are doing together. We were not allowed to go out. So you, you don't really see the world. Yeah. And um, and then I move into my adult life in in, in UK. I mean, I stayed for a year so long, only uh, in England. And then I came to Scotland and I stayed here. And that's where I actually I started, really started my adult life. Yeah. And that's all I see. So for me, it's like not I don't come from here, but it's like that's all I really, really know. Yeah. And that's nice because people could be very nice, but it could be bad also, but could nice. And and that's where I, I became a man and 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 started to understand things, understanding. So of course I've got this um, connection with Scotland more than I've got with, even though I love France, but I know Scotland more than I know France. Brilliant. Into the, we're going to the midfield. Obviously, you're playing with two holding midfielders. We'll start off with your first, your, your left-sided sitting midfielder. Yeah, my left sided will be uh, Blaise Matuidi. Brilliant. One again, world champion. Uh, play for UV. Uh, play for choice with me. Uh, you know, it's not much to say. He, he was a box-to-box -box, uh, midfielder. Never stopped, never tired. Uh, it, was, it was actually weird. 
the guy came in the group one day, he was 17. He was not, not even a starting player with the under 17 teams. And the first team coach said, uh, went to the under 17 coach, under 18, sorry, and said, I need a, I need a player for my game. I've got a friendly game, uh, a game between us, a bounce game. So I would like uh, some uh, young players. I need two or three. And he said, uh, and the first team coach said, I can't give you the, our best players because we've got an important game on Saturday. So I'm just going to give you a player who, who won't be in the squad. And Blaise was one of them. Probably. And he came, in, in, he came, he wasn't talking. I know Blaise because also we, we come from the same city in France. He's my neighbor. Yeah. So we, I took him under my wing. Um, and uh, we went in and just and we we played the, the bounce game and it was amazing. And he never went back with the under 18 anymore. He stayed with us full time. Right, right. It's been very lucky. And then he he showed why he was lucky. You know, you need to deserve luck sometimes. Yeah. See, when France won the World Cup in 2018, and obviously your teammate Blaise Matidi was in the was in the squad. How how good was it for you personally when that when France won the World Cup? It was good for me. I didn't win the World Cup. <laughs> but see, when your, your teammate, like, your, obviously you played with Blaise Matuidi, how pleased were you for him? <laughs> I'm just joking. No, you know, I'm proud. It's yeah. been that I'm proud. I, I, was, it's, I know it's, it's very, very far to say, but it's like I participate of, of him being the way he is now. Yeah. Because he used to come to my house and then I would give, you, give him advices and we used to do stuff together. And some, because Paris was two hours away, so we used to drive some time to Paris uh, to see our parents. Because obviously we were in the same place because he wasn't driving at the time and then we'll drive back in choice. Uh, we used to do stuff together and and we, we had time to speak a lot. So when he became a, a world champion, you know, he's, he's got this feeling of proud. Um, but, you know, it's not even that. It was a young group yeah. to be professional. It was it was just amazing to see, you know, they play with their quality. So there's a lot of um, journalists who say that they were not the best team. Uh, well, they won, so obviously they were the best team. They yeah. may not have the best, the, the most attractive football, but you have to play with your qualities, you know. And that's when they be clever. They've been the best team to play with their qualities. They knew to go, um, going forward they were quite quick. They knew they could defend, so they would say they would give you the ball and say do what you have to do, but be ready because as soon as we've got the ball, we're gonna play behind you. And that's what they've done, and, and they deserve to win. Been very smart. Yeah, definitely couldn't agree more. We'll move on to your, your other side of the holding midfielder. Who have you got in there? Uh, Lassan Nigera. Brilliant. So Lassan Nigera, play, I played with him in Le Havre. Uh, very interesting character. He was very, very... Um, he was sure of what he was about to achieve, so he was substitute at Le Havre. But he said, I will be one of the best defensive midfielder at some point in my life. Mm-hmm. He worked so hard towards that and you see Sheffield, um, Chelsea, Arsenal, Real, uh, Chelsea, Real Madrid, Arsenal, it's yeah. to play. No, he's, he was an amazing player also, never tired, um, very good with the ball, he liked like to do the dirty work and going for, he was so strong as well for a, a, a guy, he was yeah. very strong and fast and a very funny guy as well, nice. One of the best, hundred percent. Play yeah, for the French too. He had a really good career, yeah. He's a, obviously won the FA Cup with Portsmouth as well, didn't he? Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, for good. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. We'll move on to the your your front four now. It's we'll start off with your your left winger. Who have you got in left wing? Um. So I'm, I, I've got uh, I don't know which one was it. I think it's uh, Sinama Pungol. Yeah. Sinama Pungol. Play for Liverpool. Amazing player, very tricky uh, at his best. Because I'm not gonna say when he played for for Dundee, but at his best, he was he was he was really good. He was a very young prospect who could give everything. You know, to play for Liverpool when the team you had the uh, Steven Gerrard, Alonso, uh, Razor, you you must be really good. Yeah, definitely. Could you see even then, like obviously, did you did you think he would he would do better than he has? Like I don't think he really got his career going. Like what, why do you think that was? It's because the time I think that the the eighty four generation we, we were um, unlucky, not very unlucky. But if you take those players and you put them now, they'll be top players. Right. But because football wasn't as um, as big as he, he was big, but it wasn't as big as he is now. 
you know, where players play, play two games and then they they been sold for for two hundred million. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. they, it wasn't like this at the time. Now it's, it's completely a different game, and I'm sure if at the time those kind of players would have been when I'm, I'm thinking those kind of talking about Cinema Pungol uh, would have been um, with the play now they yeah. would start in the first team. They will definitely be uh, sold for PSG or, or, or Real Madrid or Barcelona for, for stupid money. Yeah, definitely. We'll move on to your other side there. Uh, I mean, who have you got on the right hand side? I've got uh, his cousin, uh, Letalic, Anthony right. Letalic. Yeah. I love playing with both of them. They've got their cousin. They've got an understanding with each other, which was unreal. They played together since they were young. Nice, nice guys as well. They come from Le Havre. And I and I played there. We played together in the under twenty one national team. Really good guy. They love each other. It's actually well, they loved each other. Uh, so it was it was nice to see. And uh, and yeah, the understanding again of, of the, the game. You know, they play for Liverpool, both of them. I think so. Yeah. They knew each other, and it, 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 it was easy to play. And see that French under twenty one team. Just how good was it to be on that? You know what? When I played for the under twenty one team, I was the only player who were not professional. Right. Okay. So they were laughing about it because I didn't have my my. my... So what happened is, was, I get um, a, a, a phone call. I think from my coach saying, "Oh, Christian, the 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 first team, um, Ivory national team called you, and they would like you to um to be part of the the Ivory national team." I said, oh, I'm so happy, I'm proud, I'm, I want to be there. Yeah. And at the another phone call the next same day, says then the under 21 French national team wants me to join them. And I'm like, wow, with all those players, what I'm gonna do? And I say, no, nah, I'm gonna go for Ivory Coast. I want to play for Ivory Coast. Right, That's okay. why I was first team. And uh, my heart's always been there. Even though I'm not born there, but I always wanted to play there, you know, and, and my coach, the, the sport director made me understand and if I don't go with a French national team, they won't give me a, a professional contract. Yeah. And I was very, very uh, influenceable. Is that the right word? Yeah. At the time, I was, I was young. I was only seven. I was just turned 18 or something. And I said, okay, okay, okay. I'm going with the French national Not, not that I regret, but it, it wasn't my first choice at the start, at the beginning. But, I, I loved it. It was just amazing. You know, when you play for the French national team, you, you need to start to realize that you are one of the best six players in France at the time. And I was eight. I was just 18 and I was playing for under 21. And I'm like, wow. And you know, you don't you don't realize it until later say, wow, I was one of the best players in France. Yeah. And uh and, and I've seen that when, <laughs> at the first training session, when they started to pass the border one, I was like, whoa, that's a different level. He was going so fast, everybody was so smart. It was the passing accuracy, the, the, the way they see the game. And then you, you could see the first team passing with Zinedine Zidane, um, um, Thierry Henry, uh, Trezeke, and you'd be, whoa, <laughs> Thuram. It was, ah, it was so nice. It was so, so we went to Clairefontaine where you know, the, French, the French, French national team always go. Yeah. And, and the feeling, it's just like, you know, you're part of something. You, yeah. Oh, brilliant, brilliant story. Uh, we'll finish up your, your front three before we move on to the striker. Who have you got in the, completing the front three? Uh, um, so, Andrew Driver. Right, okay. It was it was it was very good. He was so so fast. He was very direct. Um, he was making effort all the time, um, and you know he, he he wasn't the kind of player who was doing too much. He just knew what he had to do for such a, also a young age. Understanding the games the way he, he did, it was it was it was really good. You know, he knows as soon as he's got the space, if he can't cross the ball. He will cross if he needed to go one to one. You know, sometimes you play when you're playing, you need to tell player what to do. Like you scream, go on one to one, uh, cross the ball. He didn't need to do anything. Yeah. So the problem is he was so fast. Then, for example, when I was playing a front and I would put the ball wide for him, the time I get to the box, he will have crossed. 
and oh, it, it was just it was difficult, but yeah, he was a very good player. Yeah, definitely. I couldn't agree more. Well, just for, well, before we go into your, your striker, I just want to ask you as well about your, what you're doing now. Obviously, you've, you've, you've expelled at Trun and Anne, and now, now you're at Anbank. Just how much are you enjoying just playing now? No, I just love the boys are nice. I trust the coach, which uh, it's been a while since this happened. Um, I just enjoy football, you know. It's just yeah. happy to to be with players who are happy to be there, you know. Just now with the with the situation, uh, the players don't get paid, right. but they're still happy to be there, come on tie, laugh. And so we're at top of the league just now, so everybody's so happy. Um, well, how not to be, but everybody's so happy. And it's just, it's just good. They're just there just to have fun, yeah. you know. And obviously when the result goes for you, it's even better. And 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 I just and I just love it, you know. And tough time. So the first time for a long time, I actually play my real position, which is so good. Do you, just love it? Do you just love it now, just playing your real position? Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. We'll finish up with your striker. Who have you got up front? Uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> me. Brilliant. And I won't have to work too much this time, just stay in the box and wait for the balls. And, yeah, definitely. See, just before we, we finish off, is there just was there any kind of players who were just unlucky to miss out that you that you really enjoy playing with in your career? There's another striker called um, called uh, Sebastian Gratz. He was a striker player for Monaco, uh, player under twenty one national team. So amazing striker. He was the most accurate player in front of the goal I've seen. He was just unbelievable. Um, there's a player called Jara. Uh, is, is that Mohamed? No, Mohamed Sissoko, sorry. Yeah. Uh, amazing player also. Amazing midfielder. So good with the ball. Uh, strong as well. Um, good vision of the game. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I would say uh, goalkeeper Pade Kenny. Yeah. Very good goalkeeper as well. Uh, not the fittest. But very, very quick to go down, uh, very vocal as well. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, yeah, that's what I see. Brilliant team. Brilliant. Team. Brilliant. Brilliant. Would, ah. you have, would you love to play? I've played with that team. Sorry, we, Lee Wallace on the left. Lee Wallace. 100%. 100%. Uh, would I love to play for this team? Oh, yes. We wouldn't. I don't think there is. We say no to this. Yeah, no player. Brilliant. Christian, it's been an absolute pleasure to be on the show, mate. Thanks very much for joining me. I've really enjoyed it. You're welcome. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks very much.